In today's video, I'm going to give you three methods for completely erasing watercolour mistakes. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as drawing, mixed media and a little bit of business and motivation too. If you enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing. It's free and if you click the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now, some of the methods I'm going to show you today are suitable for when you need to leave white paper. Some of them are suitable for when you need to overpaint, and one of them is suitable for both. But before we get started on that, I just want to go through a few things that are going to make it easier for you to avoid and to remove mistakes. The first thing to note is that you should be doing any of these methods on bone dry paper. It's not like spilling red wine on your sofa or spilling, you know, something down your jeans. You don't have to get to it straight away. In fact, there's a huge advantage to be gained from leaving mistakes alone. Now, to be clear, if you have just made a mistake and you see it happen, you can blot. In other words, I mean, get some paper towel and blot firmly once, lift straight off and then leave it alone, let it dry. When paper is wet, it's very fragile. If you start scrubbing at your paper when your mistake is still wet, all you're going to be doing is pushing that mistake further into the paper. Some other things that can make a difference are paper quality. Now, I'm not one of these tutors that says, you know, you must have Arshi's watercolour paper, you must do everything on 100% cotton. But do be aware that if you've got cheaper paper, you're going to have less options for removing mistakes and for scrubbing at your paper. It may be that in the stage of painting that you're at, that's not so important to you. You just want to get lots of practice done on lots of cheap paper, and that's fine. In fact, I'll be demonstrating today on a wood pulp paper. It's a cheap practice paper it's not 100% cotton it's just something to be aware of you have a lot more leeway on a thicker heavier cotton paper now don't make me give you the paper stretching lecture again but if your paper is flat it's going to be easier both to remove mistakes and to avoid making them in the first place because the paint won't settle into the dips so with those things being shared let's get on and look at technique number one for erasing watercolor mistakes so let's start with one of the most commonly used ways of erasing mistakes, and that's lifting out. You may have seen people do this with a stiff brush. You may have seen them do it with something like a special eraser sponge. I've got a better way of doing it and some tips to make it work for you. Now for scrubbing out, I like to use a cotton wool pad like this. These are the type, there's just cotton, there's nothing impregnated on it or anything like that. But these are the type they sell to remove makeup. The little round balls work as well, but I actually like these flat ones, they work particularly well. Now some of you will want to go into the comments and say, oh, but Michelle, you can buy a magic eraser sponge now. I know you can, I've used them, this is better. Now the reason I find this better is because sponges are very good at releasing water as well as sucking it up. So what I find is with these, they don't release the water back onto your paper. It is a matter of preference. If you have one of those sponges, it works for you absolutely fine. You can use a stiff brush as well. That I find does tend to leave a mark. So this is what I like to do. Now, when I had a real job before the pandemic, by real, I mean, let's, you know, let's be honest here, I was an artist. But when I had a real job, it's to go out to art clubs and do demonstrations. There's one I used to do that used to make everybody go, ooh. So I'm hoping that when you watch this, you'll have the same results. So I've painted some stripes here. I've also done a little splodge as if I made a mistake here. And I've got some masking tape. I've pressed it on my clothing and I've reduced the sticky by about 50% by picking up lint from my clothing, which is what you must do before you put this on your paper. You also need to make sure your paper's bone dry. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mask out each side like this, and then we're gonna have a go at lifting these colors out. Now, how well these colors lift out will depend on how staining the pigments themselves are. Now, this won't always lift everything out. It's very good for little splodges on white backgrounds, which I'll show you in a moment. It's also good for areas that you're going to overpaint later. But if you get a little bit of residue of color left, do keep watching the video because my next two methods will show you how to remove that completely. I'm going to get this cotton pad now. I'm gonna put some water on it, but very, very little. I'm gonna squeeze it out as hard as I can. Now, if you have any mobility problems, such as arthritis, and you cannot physically squeeze very hard with your hands, place it between some paper towel and put it on the floor, and put your heel on it, that'll get it. And what we're gonna do now 
is I'm just going to scrub at this, but I'm not going to go sideways because that would push it under the tape. So I'm just going to go backwards and forwards. Now, as you start to scrub, you're actually lifting up. So what you need to do then is to turn it over and find another place that's clean. I am on incredibly cheap paper here. So what's going to happen on this cheap paper is going to start to bead up. Now, whatever paper you're using, if you get to the point where the paper starts to bead up, then you have to stop, unfortunately, and move on to a different method. And the closer your paper is to 100% cotton, the more effective you're going to find this result. As I said, you need to keep moving your cotton pad round so that you're working just on clean paper. My paper is starting to bead up here, particularly on this one here, which is the Payne's Grey, which is a staining color. So let's have a look and peel the tape off slowly. And you can see it's done quite a good job of removing probably about 95% of that paint. Let's have a look at this little splodge over here. Now, another good use for the tape is if you're trying to erase a mistake and you've got other things very near it. So let's imagine, I'm just gonna grab my pen here. Let's imagine that you had other things near here, you know, the other areas of paint, maybe petals or something like this. And you want to rub this mistake out, but you mustn't smudge these other areas. You know, if you've got paint here, and you've got paint here, you mustn't touch these areas at all. And this is where your masking tape comes in handy because what you're going to do is literally just mask out and protect those painted areas so that you can remove this mistake. So again, let's get a clean piece of cotton pad, a little bit of water, squeeze it out. And now I'm going to erase the mistake, but again, I'm not gonna push it underneath the masking tape. Now, depending on the type of paper you're using and the colors you've used, pretty much 100% removal here. So let's lift this up. Now, if this was a white background, that would be good enough for it not to show at all. The one down the middle here, we do have some paint residue, which is to be expected because I've got so many different colors here, but it certainly would be pale enough to overpaint. And in the next two methods, I'm gonna show you how to remove residue as well. At this point in the video, if you're enjoying this tutorial, can I ask you please to give me a little like, a little thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, the YouTube algorithm will push this video out to more people. I'll gain more subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100,000, and I'm super grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. This next method I learned from my experience of traditional printmaking. When you make handmade prints whereby you use an old fashioned press and often oil based inks, the tiniest little spot of ink outside of the square part that the print is in, they call it being out of registration, the tiniest little ink smudge can mean that your print is unsaleable. It's oil based ink, you can't just blot it out. So how do printmakers get rid of it? I'm going to show you now. So what I've got next are some tiny little splatters. And this method is best for when you need to leave a white background. This method won't overpaint very well. So what I've got here is a scalpel blade and I've got a putty rubber and I've got a soft brush. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the scalpel blade and we're gonna place it so it's sort of flat like this. So it's not on the point, you're using the flat of the blade. And an area like this, for instance, we want to get rid of this little speckle here. What we can do is, Start scraping very gently at the paper. Hardly any pressure, and you want to vary the direction of the strokes as well. Now, anywhere that you degrade or scratch the surface of the paper, it will affect how the next layer of paint goes on. So that's why I'm saying that this one is best for areas that aren't going to be overpainted. Use your soft brush to brush away those little bits. You don't want to get the oil from your fingers on there and we're just going to keep working on this tiny circles tiny backwards and forwards motions with that flat blade Now at this stage, the mark is removed, but it's gonna show the paper's going to look like it's been you know, fluffed up. So what we do now is we burnish the surface of the paper and we're going to use an eraser like this. I'm gonna use just little sort of pressing and twisting motions, which work better actually than rubbing backwards and forwards. You may see areas where there's little bits of paper sticking up. So you may want to just go back across with the blade 
and just repeating this process until you can barely see that the paper has ever been touched. Have you ever wished there was some kind of typewriter correction fluid for your watercolors? Because if you overpaint with gouache, it tends to lift. If you overpaint with acrylic, it's not a good surface for putting watercolor on top. I've got something better for you. Now we're going to be using Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Let me show you the best way of applying it and how to overpaint. So just to make you aware for this section of the video, I actually filmed it on a separate day because when I reviewed the footage, there was a problem with the video quality, so I've had to refilm. I'm only mentioning that because you may see some red marks on my hands. Don't be alarmed, it's just from hitting people. Um, I do martial arts in my spare time, and last night we were um, hitting a lot of uh, pads and people. I mean, there were pads in between the people. It's not like I was, you know, smashing people directly. Only, only a little bit, only a little bit. This is why I don't worry about the trolls in the comments. I've literally had my ribs broken and that's what I do for fun. So enough about me. Um, I've got here some Daniel Smith watercolour ground and you see what's happened here is I've put some phthalo blue on the paper. I've tried to scrub it out but because it's such a strong colour and you know it's literally got the half-life of nuclear waste this colour. I spilt some on my foot once when I was demonstrating on an easel um, for a, a big thing in London and I dripped this stuff on my foot, this phthalo blue. It was literally there two weeks later with, you know, daily showers and swimming pools and all the rest of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to overpaint this and I'm going to get this, uh, this colour here. So this is the white. You get this in transparent as well and you can use this stuff for putting on surfaces like wood and metal and putting watercolour paint on top. No, I haven't tried it. If you would like me to make those videos though, I'll do some experiments and you know, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna overpaint this. I'm gonna do it in thin layers. I've been experimenting with different types of brush. I tried a round watercolour brush, the standard shape, and I found that it just put the paint on rather thickly. And you don't want, this is gonna make a difference to the paper surface, no matter how good this is, you don't want sort of a hard edge where it's stopped, so it does look like typewriter correction fluid. I tried it with an acrylic brush, a flat acrylic brush. That worked pretty well, but we had a few brush strokes left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this soft, flat, this synthetic watercolour brush, and I'm just gonna paint this stuff on and you'll see that I'm feathering it really gently. So the idea here is to put a really thin layer on, not to get any brush strokes, and not to have sort of a hard edge where you finish. So you don't want to be able to see the outside line, and that's going to make it much easier to overpaint. So I'm probably going to put two coats on this. So I'll put one coat on like this, just feathering, trying to make sure it's very, very light, no brush strokes showing. I'll put this first coat on, I'm going to put a second coat on once this is dried. I won't film that bit because it's really dull. And then we'll come back and we'll put some paint on top and see what result we get. So this has had two more coats now. To be fair, I can still slightly see the blue underneath, but you have to get to the point where you think to yourself that it's okay to overpaint because if you put too much of the watercolor ground on, it's going to show a lot. So I'm going to put some color on top now just so that we can see how it's looking. So let's put some bright colors on and do some wet into wet. So I'm starting up here on the part that does not have the watercolor ground on, and then we'll bring it into the area where we have the ground on. Now, very, very close up, I mean like a millimeter away, you can probably see a slight brush stroke here. But what you're not getting is a strange texture. You're not getting that hard edge where you've put a different paint medium on top. Let's go in with this phthalo blue. So I was happily at my Kung Fu class last night and my hands were getting really smashed up and I was thinking, oh, it's fine though, because I haven't got to do any more filming until after the weekend. And we do something called trauma training, which is as painful as it sounds. And, you know, it kind of conditions your skin so that you do recover very quickly. And I'm thinking, that's okay, I won't do any more filming till after the weekend and everything's fine. And then, of course, I start reviewing the footage that I'd done and it had gone wrong. So here I am with smashed up hands. Okay, so I think you'll agree that's an excellent result. And this is a fantastic product. As I said, I'm really pleased with it. They're not sponsoring me. I did buy it with my own pennies and I'm not even gonna put affiliate links in the description because it pays so little and it's so time consuming. It's really not worth my time. Let me know if you'd like to see me demonstrate this product for other uses, such as on wood or metal. Can you use it on glass? I'll do some research. Let me know if you want to see that video. 
Do let me know in the comments which one of these methods you like the best and if you're going to be giving any of them a try. Before you leave this video, don't forget to check out the video description. There's all sorts of free things in there. There's free downloadable PDFs. I've even got a free watercolor painting course that you can take. You can also find out about my paid courses and my Patreon membership. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to enjoy the video that I made all about drawing mistakes. It's the 10 most common drawing mistakes that I see people make. You can watch that video right now.